Hey, I'm Warren Sprouse. You're on the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 until 10 p.m. to look at life through a biblical lens and to solve all the world's problems in two hours or less. I want to share with you what's really wrong with people today. There's a growing business in the art of emotional counseling. The university-trained psychiatrists, psychologists are pitted against the licensed uh, psychotherapists and family counselors. On the fringe of all of this are the pastors and others who simply counsel people uh, regarding their problems. None of these people, none of these groups have a great deal of respect for the others within their system. Psychiatry and psychology are different di dis disciplines within their individual systems there are divisions there is biological psychology and there is behavioral psychology and if you read the literature in these two camps you'll realize they don't get along with each other they disagree with each other they don't i won't say they don't like each other they've probably never met but they don't get along None of these, however, have respect for the largely untrained licensed family counselors and what they're doing. And we haven't even begun to think about what they're doing with the pastors or the Christian counselors. Because for the pastor and for the Christian counselor, what they do is largely up to them. They're not being controlled by anything or anybody. And their therapy, their, their philosophy, their methodology is all over the map. Why? Well, largely because none of them actually know what's wrong. And I'm talking about the most highly skilled, trained psychiatrist in the world or the guy next door that just helps people who come by. And it's largely because they're looking in the wrong place. It isn't that they couldn't know. But since they have a non-biblical perspective, they're bound to miss it. Do we have psychological disorders? Do we have chemical imbalances? And if so, how do we tell those two apart? I mean, really tell them apart. My experience, my reading, my interaction with these folks teaches me that largely no one really knows. According to them, statistically, you could pay $200 an hour for a 40-minute hour to the best psychiatrist in the business. Or you could see a licensed therapist. Or you could be counseled by your pastor. Or you could talk to your neighbor. Or do nothing and statistically a, a, arrive at, with the same result. That's not my opinion. These are the studies that have been done. This is established truth. Now, some therapists rely on drugs. Others would never do that, not unless a medical doctor examined the patient and prescribed it. Psychological drugs are highly dangerous and they are very often addictive. And no one knows what any drug is going to do in your system. So what's going on? Well, I think primarily we've been conditioned to believe that every bad feeling we have is a problem. A problem only a trained professional can identify and resolve. Second to that, we have been conditioned to believe the bad feelings are because we have a biological or a psychological problem. Thirdly, we have been conditioned to believe that these problems will only get worse if we ignore them. Many people believe they need medications. They go to a counselor and that's what they want. Others believe that they need therapy. Few there be who actually know what's going on. So what's going on? Well, the Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made creatures and that we've been designed to enjoy the fellowship of God. 
The Bible says that we are sinners by nature and tend to avoid fellowship with God. The Bible says we live in a world where we are free to live any way we choose and still eat. Being self-oriented, we are slow to consider our problems to be the result of our own attitudes, our own choices, our own neglects. There are close to 500 mental disorders in the newest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. They call it the DSM-5. That means we all have at least one and no doubt more. So what is a mental disorder? Well, it clearly means that your mind is disordered. Well, what is my mind? Is my mind an organ like the heart? Well, no. Is my mind the brain? No. My mind is a non-physical part of my being, a product of my soul, my spirit. So? So the professionals are starting out on the wrong foot. They don't even know what part of the body is in play. A psychologist is a person who studies the suki, the soul. But they do all of their studies on the brain. Is the brain the soul? Are my decisions made in my brain? No, they're not. They're worked out there so the body can function, but the decision is made somewhere else. The behavioralist abandons all of that and has a better chance of helping you because the behavioralist is looking at what you do, not at what you are. But who's to say that eating right, sleeping right will fix your fears and your anxieties if it's your relationships which are driving the angst? And how many areas of your life have been affected and need fixing? And how long has this been going on? I mean, it might be something that you've had from your childhood or it might be something you just started last month. The whole idea here, the whole concept is a minefield. And the therapists are all over the map. The therapist will give you all the time you need at $95 an hour to figure out what your problem is. Some of them will give you direct instruction as to how to fix it. Others will let you come to your own conclusion. There's a wide range of philosophy as to how to resolve these things, even among those that seem to look at the behavior the same way. And should you fall into a catatonic state while all this is going on, there's always the mental hospital. Again, no mental hospital in the world deals with the mental, the mind. They don't do it. They all deal with the body and with the attitudes and the behaviors, the chemistry. Are you confused yet? Allowing for biological causes and physical disorders, the problems human beings have are rooted in their hearts, not in their heads. If life were the, in life, there are issues of godly character, over 50 of them. If you violate a significant number or you just violate a very significant character quality, over time you will have a problem. There are also issues of godly morality. Violate those issues and problems will arise. There are divine roles for women and for men, for children, for employers, for employees. Violate these and see what you get. We violate these as a matter of course. There is training for children. 
training them in the way they should go. Know any parents training their children? Structuring the lives of their children so as to help them succeed in life? Life the way it is, not the way you want it to be? There is a need to guard our hearts and our minds, to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, to be a testimony of God in and to the world, to be productive citizens and family members. If you violate or ignore any one of these over a period of time, you are a candidate for emotional, social, and spiritual problems. Problems which will manifest in your relationships in your emotions, in your thinking. And at some point, disrupt your chemical balance. Aha, now we can deal with it. And they'll fix the chemical balance, but they've never fixed the problem. A natural human being is not equipped to live a productive life. A natural human being wants what he wants when he wants it. He's selfish. He's prone to anger, to dominating other people. He's not equipped to live a productive life. Or he's kind of what we call mousy. You know, he's in the back. He's never going to make a decision. You know, there's all kinds of things that are disruptive. Would that we were animals alone. Animals at least have instinct. Humans, however, must be trained. They must be conditioned. We are not born with a productive value system. We are naturally selfish. We are not automatically wise or thoughtful. We must be taught the differences and the pitfalls of wrong decisions. Without this training, human beings will not naturally be satisfied, settled, nor at peace. Sigmund Freud was an atheistic drug addict, cocaine, with homosexual tendencies. He lived a largely antisocial lifestyle. Why would anybody follow his teachings on anything as subjective as how people feel and respond to life? Beyond Freud, there have been scores of psychological theories propounded to answer the basic questions of life all of them denouncing the rest, none of them fixing anything. Because the real issue here is peace. Peace and order in our physical, social, and spiritual systems. When every part of our being is operating the way it was designed, when our hearts are oriented in a right and a good way, when our bodies are healthy and strong, when our relationships are healthy and productive, when the tensions in our life are limited to those which teach and strengthen, when the pain and discouragements of life are handled properly, when our diets, our eat, sleep cycles are healthy, and when our lives are productive in ways which contribute to social, spiritual pursuits, then there will be peace in our heart. And only then. In our bodies, in our relationships, in the world, there will still be pain, suffering, discouragements, fears. But they won't be debilitating. Because we will have help that we have built into our system. Help in the sense that we have others in our lives who are committed to supporting us. Help in the fact that we have a God who lives in us both the will and to do according to his good pleasure. That we have a structure that supports us. Physical structure, emotional structure, psychological structure. The large percentage of people who are in therapy today have no one no one they want, no one who cares about them, no one who is what they need. All you have to do is ask them. You ask them, and they'll tell you. 
it's always everybody else's fault. It's not a pretty picture. Now do you see why it's easier to simply identify your problem as a mental or physical issue? The alternative is to go to work and to fix what's broken. Your spirit is a good place to start, your soul. If you're not saved, it's broken. Settle it. Be at peace with God. And he'll make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Or you can find a therapist. Spend millions of dollars lying on her couch talking to somebody about how you feel. Or you can take pills. Keep in mind two things. There are pills out there that you will get from a therapist, a doctor, that have side effects that are identical to the very thing he or she is trying to cure. Check it out. And the other side of it is that the medications can become addictive and or you'll have to change them regularly to avoid that. And you will never really fix the problem. You just won't feel it anymore. 